and all the time. Amen. Amen. So for our announcements this morning, we have Bible study on Tuesday here at Trinity and Wednesday at Bethany. Um, we're still doing one more week for the uh, health kits, if anyone's interested. Um, and if you don't want to do shopping, I can do shopping for you. Um, anybody else have any other announcements?
rest of the day comes from Psalms 33, 12 through 22. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chooses for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He performs the hearts of all, and considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army, no warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance, despite all its great strength it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive and family. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help, our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Our songs of praise, the first one is uh, Lord be glorified on 215, and the second one is just the post of what we do.
Thank you, Father, for all your gifts and blessings. May we remember that all we have comes from you. All our gifts, all our blessings, every penny, it all comes from you. Help us to spend this wisely and as you desire us to do. In Jesus' name we pray.
stuff is coming in my mind. I, I can't turn it off. He says, well, you only have one thing to do, and that is to get up and start writing it down. So I did. For the next four hours, I sat at the kitchen table trying to take it all in. And I say this with a chuckle, but yet I say it with all seriousness, that when God answers prayers, it doesn't have to be when it's convenient for us. It doesn't have to be in the daylight hours. God is in bought of 8 to 3 or 8 to 4 or 9 to 5. And then I always ask him that I would be obedient to his will. Again, which I realized and found out that means any time of the day and night. So when we do come to God in prayer and he answers us, we do have to be willing to obey. So this is who message God wanted me to bring to all of you. It's not, it's just a simple message. But sometimes I think we make it hard. We think they have to be so long in it. This is straight to the point. When I was doing the Bible studies for Lent, one of the studies dealt with the scriptures we just read from the Gospel of John, verses 1 to 10. And after I read it, I noticed that after Mary Magdalene went to the tomb, she immediately ran and told Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. And I thought right away, why did he just name the other disciple? What was the point of just saying she ran and told the other disciple? Now, I did find out through further study that they thought it was John, but they're really not sure. But still, my thoughts kept coming back. Why do you think he just named me in the first place? The first and only thought that God put in my mind was, because I didn't just love him, that verse stands for every one of us. We can plug any of our names into that passage. Why? Because Jesus loves every one of us. We are all called to witness for Christ. Now you might be thinking, yes, we already know this. This is nothing new. But let's take a look at some of the other passages which refer to this topic, the other disciple, as well. From John chapter 18, verse 16, it says that Peter was following Jesus and so was another disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest. Now again I ask him, why was that other disciple known so well? Again, I did more research, and it really doesn't say why he was known so well, but there was a sense of agreement through all the people who studied this that was because he was following Jesus. He was trying to live his life through Jesus. And in doing so, he was telling more and more people about him. So, we need to start spending time in getting to know Jesus. And in turn, we will want to tell everybody as well. Now that doesn't mean that we need to be puffed up people about this. We're actually more humbled by the more we read God's word and the more we try to be his hands and feet and voice. It doesn't make us proud. When we come to know our Savior, we actually learn to live by his standards. And that should be evident to everyone we meet. And in John chapter 19, verses 26 and 27, we read, When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. Jesus wanted them to take care of each other because he wouldn't be here to do that. Isn't that what Jesus instructs us to do as well? Take care of each other? In John chapter 13, verses 33 and 34, we hear Jesus' words. So dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. As I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come to where I am going. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I loved you, you shall love each other. And in John chapter 20, verse 4, it states that both disciples were running together 
and the other disciple ran faster than Peter. Why again, I asked myself. It states in my commentary that maybe John was a little younger and he had more energy. But I thought, what if he just had a little more enthusiasm for searching for Jesus? Could we put ourselves in that situation as well? Are we running enthusiastically to find Jesus every day? Or because we have already found him, we have come complacent? We are so excited now as we were when Jesus first came into our lives. I have to stop there and tell this little story. My daughter and her family were on vacation last week with a little one who was five. Two days before they went, she kept waking up early. She was so excited to go on that vacation. And I thought, where is our excitement coming into God's house every week? Because we've done it so long, do we lose that excitement? We also read in John chapter 20, verse 8, that the other disciple who had first come into the tomb then also entered, and he saw, and he believed. He believed immediately. Did we believe immediately? Well, you might say, of course we believe. We're sitting in church. Isn't that proof positive that we believe in Jesus? But the bigger question is, is that belief? Is that enough? Which brings me to the song that I have so many times in my life. But again, through the words that Jesus gave me, this song has taken on a whole new meaning because of the passages that we just read from the Gospel of John. But before I go into that, I have to tell you that before God gave me this message, my husband Barry and I were in Sam's Club. And we ran into a couple from our church. And her and I were standing there talking, and again, this was back in March, so she said she's glad that the church was starting to open up, although she enjoyed listening to the messages online and also the other messages that were on the TV. And she said she really likes to hear the messages on how we were supposed to respond to things happening in our lives today. Well, I didn't really get that much thought right away, and I just went on to do more shopping. But at 4.30 in the morning, her words come back to me. So I don't know if this is what she was referring to, but I don't think that message is just for her. God gave this, this message for all of us. And the song that I'm referring to is Because He Lives. And that's what we'll be singing at the end. But if you have your hymnals, if you would like to turn to page 364, as I read this, you don't have to, but you really don't want me to. The words in the song read, God sent his son. They called him Jesus. Isn't that what the disciples were finding out and becoming true as his followers? Isn't that what we came to find out and know to be sure since becoming his disciples? Since Jesus came to love, heal, and forgive. We find that easy to do? Oh, we might think, man, yeah, yeah, I want to heal somebody, that's great. And to love, that's easy. But what about forgiveness? I think each one of us can look back in our lives at one point or another and see that maybe we had a hard time forgiving somebody that did something to us. But forgiveness is what's all about. Jesus came to buy our pardon, and there's an empty grave to prove that our Savior lives. Can't you just put yourself in the other disciples' place when he raced to the tomb up there and saw that it was empty? He saw the empty grave. What kind of response did we have when we learned about the empty grave? The second verse goes like this. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But it's great still to calm assurance that this child can face uncertain days because he lives. That newborn baby is us. 
I don't care how old we are now. We were all born into this world. We all went through the baby phase, the adolescence, and now we're mature. We're all together there. But I just can't imagine God looking down every time a baby's born. He's, he has to feel so much pride in every one of us because we are his children. But is his joy turning to sorrow because of the way the world is coming? Jesus gives us that calm assurance that we can face in certain days because he lives. Which brings us to the present day situation that we've been living in. Have we really lived in that calm assurance in the past year? Or can we really say that we are living in that calm assurance right now through this pandemic or any other uncertain times in our lives? How many times have we pushed the panic button instead of turning to God? The third verse is now, and then one day, I'll cross the river. I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then, as death is way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory. And I'll know he reigns. Isn't that what the other disciples found out and realized when he saw the empty tomb? Can't you just picture yourself as the other disciple that day? Pastor Art uses this phrase a lot. We are an Easter people. I think that phrase depicts the chorus in the song. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I would like to stop for a minute and ask, is this how we are really living our lives now? And in the past year? I think most of us wish we could say that all my fear is gone. But haven't we spent most of the last year and present day living in fear because of this virus? Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be concerned and take precautions and get the vaccines or whatever you feel you need to do. But to live in constant fear negates everything that Christ stands for. All fear is supposed to be gone because we know He holds a future. Our life the life that he, Jesus gave us since we were newborn babies are worth living because we know he lives. That's what it means when we are an Easter people. Sometimes I think we forget that after we've celebrated Easter. But we're an Easter people each and every day. We don't have to live in fear because of what Jesus did for us. Now we can be sad when the people we love are no longer with us, but we can also live with the assurance that when he says he holds the future for those of us who believe, we can rest assured that our loved ones are seeing the lights of glory right now. I believe the message Jesus wants us to take away from this is don't let fear run your life. We still need to live. Jesus took that fear away. Are we living like an Easter people? Are we living in fear, afraid to face tomorrow? It shouldn't be a hard choice. If we really believe in the empty tomb, life is truly worth living just because He lives. So enjoy today, tomorrow, and every day in the presence of our Lord. Because the Savior is counting on that. And because of that, may we all be as excited as the other disciple was when he burst into the tomb and discovered that it was empty. We can, we should be, and we are the other disciple whom Jesus loved. And I'd like to say that whenever you get to these passages in there when it says the other disciple, put your own name in there. So many times I 
read the Bible when I was younger, and I just kept thinking, oh, this happened long ago, long ago. But it's just for us today, as it was back then. So I encourage you, put your name in there and see how it stands out and gives you a personal message. We should want to tell this story and be excited about it. When we tell the story to the people we meet, they can have a chance to be his disciple as well. My son, well, our son, Mark, just going through a little bit of a difficult time now, and he was told by God to go to this other church. And he bought a t-shirt there. And he told, he kind of moved away from the, his mic and his phone, so he either said, Jesus saved or Jesus loves. So he was going to wear this t-shirt out to the store. And he said, I, I have to admit, I was a little apprehensive. He said, I was either going to be met with approval, disapproval, or a lot of stares. He said, well, I'm going to wear the shirt in. He no sooner took two steps out of his car, but a man came up to him and said, I like your t-shirt. My son said, thank you, and God bless you. He walked into the store. He was met by another man who said, I like your t-shirt. He said, thank you, and God bless you. He didn't hear any negativity. He did go up the stairs. And again, that's not to say he was puffed up, but he was humbled, and he wanted to get Jesus' message out there. So here's Jesus' words to us. Go with my peace in your heart and my promise that because I live, you too shall live. All fear is gone. Look at the cross. What do you see? It's empty. It's empty because of us. God created us. And he said, I'm not going to lose what I have created. But the sad part is, there are a lot of people in the world, they're lost. And God said he wouldn't stop until everyone was saved. So it's up to us to help him. We are commissioned to be his hands and feet and voice. But are we doing enough? Are we reaching out to help the lost? the lonely, and the forgotten. I think we need to rekindle our excitement in being a child of God before we can bring excitement to anybody else in the world. Again, getting back to the vacation. We all get excited when we go on vacation. But if we can get that excited about something that only lasts about a week or a couple of days or ten days, how about the excitement then? that we get, or that we should get, about Jesus giving us eternity. Jesus giving us a life with him forever. If that isn't a reason to get excited, I don't know what is. All fear is gone. Thanks be to our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah.
can face everything, even uncertain days, because of you. Our fears are gone. The empty tomb is our proof that because you live, we too shall live. Go forth, the Lord of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.